but I am in, in, hi everyone, my name is Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading, and I am here with my May wrap up, but might I suggest you get comfortable. I am going to do this as quickly as possible, and we are going to do very small thoughts on every book I read, because I read 25 books. Yes, I did. There is a reason for that. I did a smutty retelling vlog for fairy tales. I also had Smut Den. Most of those smutty books were small and read very quickly. I also did a trying manga for the first time vlog. Again, manga reads quickly. So between those two things, it definitely bumped up what I was reading for the month significantly. Let's dive right in. Let's see what I read. Let's see what I rated it and let's see how long this takes because it, it might take a while. I will try to be concise, I promise. The first book I read this month was They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I ended up giving this three stars. This follows Charlotte. Charlotte is a professor at a university and she is a serial killer, but she kills men who are doing unseemly things. It's very much like a Me Too serial killer and I was very excited for this concept. We also follow a character, Carly, who is a student at this university and is starting to realize that there is a seedy undercurrent to this university and the way the men behave on campus. We jump right in with seeing a murder from Scarlett and then we go almost the whole book before we see another one. And since we follow a serial killer, I was expecting a bit more, well, killing. Also, I guess the twist in this book extremely early, and I think that's kind of the problem with thrillers in general, is once you've seen a twist a couple of times, it's kind of easy to spot them, and that was the case in this instance. I've read a few books that did a very similar twist, and I saw it coming, so it did kind of bring down my enjoyment of the book a bit. Again, it ended up as three stars and was okay, middle of the road book for me in the end. The next book I read was People We Meet on Vacation. I also ended up giving this three stars. This is my second Emily Henry book. I actually read Book Lovers maybe a week before I read this and ended up giving it three stars as well. And I think this is a bit of the writing is just not my thing and not my style. This follows Poppy and Alex. Every summer, Poppy and Alex go on a vacation together and they do this every summer because she lives in New York and he lives in their hometown and it's really the only time they can get together. However, two years ago, something happened that stopped these vacations in their tracks and now Poppy wants to start them back up again. We see the past vacations as like flashbacks and we see how it's hindered the relationships with other people and we see them kind of start a relationship in this book as well. I did enjoy the story, but I do really think that it's just a writing style thing for me. And I think I'm gonna give Emily Henry a pass because I know so many people love Emily Henry's writing and I don't like to keep trying and trying and trying something that is just something that isn't gonna work for me and me only. And I think that's the case with this book. The next book I read was Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Fantastic, five stars. Absolutely loved it. I needed to finally try the Brown sisters and I'm so glad that I did and I cannot wait to see the rest of the sisters. Need to continue this series fairly soon. If you don't know, this follows Chloe Brown. Obviously, Chloe has a near-death experience and decides to get a life. Makes a list of all the things she wants to do and enlists her landlord, who owns a motorcycle because one of her things is to ride a motorcycle, in helping her complete her list. Red is her landlord and the relationship between Chloe and Red is just fantastic. Also, Chloe suffers from fibromyalgia and chronic pain and I really enjoyed seeing the chronic pain rep in this book. Can't wait to see the other sisters. Five stars, love the Brown sisters. The next book I picked up was Children of Blood and Bone. This was a three star book for me. I really did enjoy the magic system in this book and I really enjoyed the world in this book. Had a great time with that. However, I did feel like there were parts of this book that just didn't make sense and made it hard to settle into the story. The main plot of this book is following our main character, Zeely. Zeely remembers when this world had magic, 
but the king has killed all the magis and there's no longer magic in this world. However, the artifacts that bring magic to this world are starting to reappear and it's up to Zeli and her brother and a friend Amari to bring magic back to this land. Like I said, that was fantastic and I enjoyed seeing that part of this book. However, there was an odd romance in the middle that really just didn't sit for me, as well as we kept seeing Zeely meet people that were seemingly important and they were then either left behind or killed off very quickly. And it felt really hard to know who was helping Zeely, who was around and who everybody was other than our core three characters. It was a revolving door of characters and I found it a bit hard to really sink into it at times. So because of that, there were things I loved, there were things I didn't, and it came out as a three star. Every second month with my friend Leandra from the TBR Zero, I read two Ice Plane of Barbarians live on the internet with all of you. And this month we did Barbarians Prize and Barbarians Mate, which I believe are books five and six. If you don't know, Ice Plane of Barbarians follows a group of women who are kidnapped by green aliens. Then when the ship breaks down, they are left on an ice planet and they discover a tribe of blue aliens and start to have alien sexy times and make alien lives and alien babies with these aliens. That's pretty much what these books are. Each book follows a different couple and we see kind of their romance. There is actually more sci-fi plot in these books than I ever anticipated, but it makes me like them even more. For Barbarian's Prize, I ended up giving that four stars. That followed Saluk and Tiffany. Saluk and Tiffany are probably my second favorite couple of this entire series. Absolutely love them. Love their relationship. And also this book kind of had a few harder topics covered. Tiffany in the very beginning of book one with the green aliens who are evil was actually sexually assaulted. And we kind of see her processing that in this book. And it was very intriguing to see how Ruby Dixon covered that in the Ice Plane of Barbarians world. Also in this book, we set up heavily for the next book, Barbarians Mate, which is Josie and Hayden's book. And unfortunately, I didn't like that one as much and it only got three stars because they did so much setting up for that romance in the book prior. I felt like I knew the couple really, really well. It was probably the couple I knew the best before we ever started their book and the problem was from that book it led me to believe it was going to be a grumpy sunshine situation but when we got to this book Josie's personality changed a lot in the first half of that book and it just wasn't what I wanted it to be and Josie was somewhat odd and her motivations just didn't match up with what I knew from the previous book. If I had never met the Josie from the previous book this one probably wouldn't have bothered me at all. I would have just assumed that was her personality. But the stark contrast between the two just didn't jive with me very much. And maybe that is because I read them back to back. So it was very obvious that Josie's personality from one book was very different from Josie's personality from the second book. Had I not read them back to back, maybe I wouldn't have noticed. Who knows? Then I read Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. This was fantastic. Five stars. Can you go wrong with dragons? I think not. This follows Annie and Leo. Annie and Leo were orphaned by a revolution that swept through their land. And before the revolution, there were like three ruling families that kind of ruled everyone. It was very much a monarchy. And if you weren't born into these ruling families, your life was quite difficult. And only the ruling families could learn to ride dragons. Now, under the new regime, anyone can become a dragon rider, and Leo and Annie are both trying to become dragon riders. However, as we go through this, we see that a surviving portion of these royal families is trying to come back and take back what they consider is theirs, and we see Annie and Leo kind of struggling with their past and what side of this revolution is correct. There's a lot of areas of gray, and what is right and what is wrong. And we see them wrestling with this and who they're loyal to and who they're not. It was really interesting. The dragons were great. The world was great. I loved Annie and Leo as characters. I loved them questioning 
both sides of this and really seeing them trying to discover what they believe to be correct as young people, not just listening to what, you know, the previous people that went on ahead of them are telling them is right, but really investigating it for themselves, even though that puts them in danger of doing so. Really enjoyed this book. Like I said, five stars. It was an easy, easy five stars for me. Then we had our first manga that I have ever read and that was Fruits Basket. This was so cute. It follows Tura Honda, who is a girl who is now living in a tent because her parents have died and her grandfather is renovating his home and has asked her to stay with friends. She does not want to impose herself on any of her friends, so she is living in a tent. On the Suma family land, the Suma family finds her and brings her to their home and very quickly discovers that the Suma family has a magic that makes them turn into the animals of the Zodiac. I had a great time with this. I had a hard time reading it because it was my first manga. Around the second chapter, I got used to reading right to left and really hit my stride and ended up giving this four stars. Then we have a little bit of a disappointment because I think I went into this book expecting a lot. And it just didn't live up to my expectations. And that was The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I was so excited for this book because it has so many things that I love. First of all, I five starred in my dreams I hold the knife. So I knew I loved the author's writing, so I wasn't worried about that. But this has a podcast element and a cult element. Two things that are my absolute favorite things, hands down. But unfortunately, I don't feel like they hit for me as well as I had hoped them to. This follows Shay. Shay hears on a podcast that her friend Laurel has been murdered. And she and Laurel went to college together and she believes something that happened while they were in college potentially is why Laurel was murdered. She connects with the podcast host who she actually knew from high school, so that was kind of fun. And they start to investigate Laurel's murder. It took a long time for us to get to the culty elements of this book. For the first half, it really kind of ended up in this seedy underbelly of this kind of sex club, which was totally fine. That didn't bother me at all. And it is certainly graphic, but that wasn't the issue that I had with this book. It was really that it just took too long to get to the cult parts. And when we did, I felt like the atmosphere wasn't really as strong as I felt like this book needed it to be. Also, there are pages and pages and pages of podcast transcripts in this book. Like it's written as a transcript. Shay, dot, 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 what Shay said. The podcaster, dot, 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 what he said. It's very much transcripts. And I was expecting it in the audiobook to be done as a podcast because pretty much any book that has an audiobook and has a podcast does that. And I went in knowing I was not going to read this book unless I had the audiobook because I wanted to experience it as a podcast. Unfortunately, that's not how the podcast is done. It's just read transcripts. And that was kind of a disappointment for me, unfortunately. And I know I shouldn't judge a book by an audiobook, but even if I had to physically read the transcripts, I think that would have annoyed me in the way it was written and the style that it was written. So this ended up being three stars, which breaks my heart because I wanted to love this book so much. The next book I read was Hooked by Emily McIntyre. This is a dark Peter Pan retelling. It's definitely very much kind of like a mafia dark romance. And I found it super interesting until the end where we had a lot of twists in about a 15 page setup. And I felt like it was just a little bit too many twists at the end and kind of had me having a hard time settling in to the end of the book. I also read Scarred, which is the second book in this retelling series by Emily McIntyre during Smut Den this month. So I'm just gonna talk about it now because it's the same series. So we'll talk about it together. This was a Lion King retelling, a dark Lion King retelling. And it follows Sarah, who's in an arranged marriage to King Michael, but falls in love with this scarred prince, Tristan. Scarred is not a mafia romance. It actually leaned more to like a medieval romance. And I liked that, except times where it felt medieval and then there were like cars and guns. So that kind of took me out of the setting a little bit. And neither of these romances did I really fall in love with the characters. I probably liked Hooked more than I liked Scarred. Both of them were just okay for me. And I ended up giving both of them three stars. 
Then I read Millennium Snow, which is another manga. This follows Chayuki, and Chayuki has a heart condition, and they don't think she is going to make it to the next snow. She's like 18 years old, and, and they're pretty sure she is going to pass away from her heart condition. She meets Toya. Toya is a vampire, and Toya has the option of bonding with one human who will live a thousand years with him in a partnership. But Toya sees that as kind of a curse and doesn't want to curse anyone to a thousand years of living. However, Chayuki kind of thinks that might be a good deal because she's about to die and this is a way of saving her. So we kind of see them play out the pros and cons in this first book. They don't reach really a decision in this first book. So I'm hoping to continue to read this series and see how it plays out. I ended up giving this one just three stars because it was really an introduction. And I don't feel like we really dived too deeply into what this series fully has to offer, but I am intrigued enough to continue for sure. I also read my first ever Katie Roberts this month with Desperate Measures, which is a dark Aladdin romance where Jasmine is actually paired up with Jafar. Jafar overthrows her father in his company and basically takes Jasmine as his own. This is a very smutty book. This is my first Katie Roberts and I asked in the vlog if this is a normal smut level for Katie Roberts books and I was told yes it was. So now I know for the future it wasn't a problem for me. I probably could have used a little bit more plot but like potato potato. I had a fun time with this book. Aladdin is one of my favorite Disney movies so that was fun. It was interesting to see it from this point of view. And I've heard from most people that this is their least favorite in the series. I gave it four stars, so that gives me really high hopes for the rest of the series. So I probably will end up continuing at some point. Who knows when? We'll see. We have another five star, and that was Spy X Family. This was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. This follows our spy, Twilight. Twilight is one of the best spies, and he now has a mission to infiltrate an organization. And the spy agency has deemed that the best way to do that is through putting his child in a school that will get him adjacent to like the head of this organization. There is just one problem. Twilight has no child. So Twilight adopts a little girl, Anya. Anya is my favorite character in this series by far. I love Anya. Little does Twilight know that Anya is a telepath. While trying to get Anya into school, they realize that this school really wants a complete family to allow them to do their interview to attend. Twilight needs a wife and he meets a woman who is a city worker by day and an assassin by night. Again, Twilight doesn't know that she is an assassin. So now we have a family made up of a spy, a telepath, and an assassin, and no one knows this except for Anya, because Anya's a telepath and knows that both of them are who they are. Loved this book, cannot wait to continue, and I'm seriously debating watching the anime. I've never watched anime before, but I think I, I, think I might. Also this month, I read Her One Mistake by Heidi Perks. This is a missing child thriller. We follow Charlotte and Harriet. Charlotte has offered to take Harriet's daughter, Alice, to the school fair with her children because Harriet has a previous engagement. While at the school fair, Alice does not get off a ride and all of a sudden, Alice is missing. We follow what happened to Alice. We follow the interworkings of Harriet and her husband's marriage. And we see also the community kind of turn on Charlotte because they blame Charlotte for losing Alice. This wasn't a super twisty thriller. It was definitely more of a psychological thriller with unreliable narrators left, right, and center. We were really never sure who was telling the truth. If anyone was telling the truth, what was the truth? Who knew? Who knew? We did not know. We had to try and figure that out. And that is what this book was. And I had a great time with it and ended up giving it four stars. The next book I read, which I absolutely adored, was The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. I ended up giving this five stars. It was fantastic. It's a dark reverse harem Peter Pan retelling. And I am obsessed. 
obsessed. I planned on reading the entire series during Smut Den. The roles of the Dark Romance Board did not work in my favor, but I did also read The Dark One by Nikki St. Crow, which is the second book in the series. I didn't love that one as much, so it ended up being a four star. And to be truthfully honest, I'm not sure if it was the book or all the circumstances that were happening in my life at the time. If you've watched that vlog, you'll know while I was reading this book, my whole province ended up being in a wildfire and people were being evacuated and I had to pack a bag because I wasn't sure if I was gonna be evacuated. It was a drama. So I'm not sure if it got four stars because I was just too distracted to really love the second book as much. Who knows, I still wanna continue on with the series. Like I said, this series is a reverse harem, Peter Pan retelling. In the first book, we realized that every darling woman ends up being kidnapped on her 18th birthday. They do eventually come back, but they come back very different and very broken. Our newest darling is Winnie Darling and Peter Pan comes and takes Winnie. We find out Peter Pan is taking the darlings because they know where something is and he needs to find it. Winnie decides to help Peter Pan and his lost boys which include Vane, who is the most powerful person still in this island because Vane has a shadow. He has a dark shadow with dark powers, but Peter Pan has currently lost his shadow. Also a part of this harem is the two fae princes, Cash and Bash. They have lost their wings because they have been banned from the fae court. I fell in love with this series. Like I said, first book, five stars, second book, four stars, and again, not sure if, I might reread that and see what happens. I, I probably will be rereading that because I feel like my enjoyment level was not where it should be just because of other circumstances. And I've already borrowed the third book from KU to read in June because I want to complete this series. I'm pretty sure it's completely out and done with four books and I need to read the entire thing. Another manga I read this month was The Promised Neverland. This was probably my least favorite manga that I read. I ended up giving it three stars. And the reason it was my least favorite was it was very YA to me and very, very young. All of our main characters are 12 and under. So it just read very young. It follows this group of orphans who find out that their orphanage is not really an orphanage and is something very sinister. The oldest three children who are 12 decide to come up with a plan to escape the orphanage and that's what we're following in this book. Again, I think it was just the fact that the characters were very young that made it hard for me to really connect with the story. I read Kathy Reich's Two Nights for a vlog this month, and this is definitely my least favorite read of the month with a two-star rating. I did not like this book. Did not like it at all. I found it very choppy, very confusing, which is odd to me because I have read other books by this author as part of the Temperance Brennan series, and that is not how the author writes in that series. So it was kind of odd to see that the writing style was very different in here as well. This follows Sunny. Sunny is a private investigator and it is brought in on a case where a grandmother has lost her daughter and her grandson to a bombing. Her granddaughter was there as well, but her granddaughter's remains were never found and she suspects that her granddaughter is still alive. And what follows is just watching Sunny move from hotel to hotel to hotel to hotel, like, I mean, 10 to 15 hotels. It was a lot. And seeing her get in physical altercations with suspects who were potentially a part of this or might not be and be completely unrelated, it was very confusing. It was very strange. I did not have a good time with it at all. I very much considered DNFing it at multiple times, but because I had the audiobook, I just tried to get through it and it ended up being a two-star read for me. I do love this author's Temperance Brennan series, so I'm probably just gonna stick to that. The Temperance Brennan series was actually what got me back into reading. I really liked the series on TV, Bones. I was watching Bones and found out there was a book series about it and started reading those. So they kind of have a nostalgic part of my heart because that's what got me back into reading years and years ago. But if I was gonna recommend the author, that is what I would recommend and I would probably pass on these. I finally read The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I have been nervous to pick this up because 
The reviews of this book are definitely not all favorable. But I loved The Silent Patient and I really wanted to read this. This is a dark academia book following Mariana. Mariana is a therapist, which is kind of what this author is known for. The Silent Patient also follows a therapist. And Mariana is convinced that Edward Fosca, a professor at Cambridge University, is a murderer. She is convinced. There is a secret society at Cambridge that is called The Maidens that is strongly based in Greek mythology and all of a sudden people start ending up dead. And he is the Greek mythology professor and everything is pointing to Edward Fosca as the perpetrator of these murders. Mariana tells the police what she suspects, but they don't believe her, so she starts to investigate herself. The reason she's brought into this is her niece Tara is at Cambridge University and one of her friends ends up murdered. I actually had a great time with this book until the end. The twist was kind of icky for lack of a better word for me it was not my favorite I did not love the twist was not a fan and up until that I was gonna give it four stars so I ended up dropping it down to three and that's where I ended up leading I still would read more books by Alex Michaelides though because the silent patient was so fantastic and I would love to see what else that author has up their sleeve I read The Four Winds this month by Kristen Hanna. This follows Elsa and her family going through kind of the after effects of the Great Depression as well as kind of going through the Great Depression. It's, it's all around that time. We first see Elsa in the 1920s. Elsa is kind of older according to the time in which she's living. She's in her 20s but isn't married and people are now starting to call her a spinster. However, she meets Rafe and they accidentally get pregnant and then have to get married. Fast forward to 1931 and it is the Great Depression and Elsa and Rafe are living on his family's farm. The farm is in the middle of a huge, massive drought. All of Texas is in a horrible state because of this drought and everyone is saying that California is the land to go to. They have farming land, they have jobs, go to California. And we see Elsa trying to figure out, should she go? Should she stay? What is she going to do? We see a look into workers' rights during this time. And it was a really interesting look at history and the Great Depression. I ended up really enjoying this book and ended up giving it four stars. The middle slash 75% mark seemed a little bit repetitive for me at times. But other than that, had a great time. And that is if I'm being really nitpicky on how I felt about this book. But that is really the only critique I could have of this book. It was a great historical fiction. Kristen Hanna does historical fiction like no one else. And I cannot wait to see what the next historical fiction from Kristen Hanna is going to be. Also this month, I read One, Two, Three by Lori Frankel. This is like an Aaron Brockovich sort of story. And we follow a set of three twins the twins go by the names one, two, and three, but they're really Mab, Monday, and Maribel. 17 years ago, the water in this very small town turned neon green, and they find out that the chemical plant was leaking chemicals into their water. This water killed a lot of people in this town. It caused severe amputations and cancers. It also ended up with birth defects and many, many issues to the community members. The company left, they turned tail, they left, but they never really had to pay for what they did because it could never be proven that they knew they were poisoning the water. Now, 17 years later, the company is trying to come back to town and we see these young people standing up and saying, we cannot allow them to come back, they hurt us and we cannot have them come back again. One of my favorite parts of this book was there was a lot of physical ability rep as well as neurodivergent rep Monday has autism and Maribel is confined to a wheelchair and is nonverbal and uses an assistive tech device to speak. My son also uses an assistive tech device. So I was very interested in seeing a character in a book with that kind of device and normalizing what that is. We see through Mirabelle that just because she cannot talk does not mean she isn't extremely intelligent. It isn't extremely capable. And it was very interesting to see that in this book. And it was my favorite part of this book. I also enjoyed, like I said, the Aaron Brockovich of it. I love the movie Aaron Brockovich. So that was fun too. 
Overall, I really enjoyed this book and ended up giving it four stars. I also read Five Little Indians this month by Michelle Good. This is a fictional story that follows five teenagers and young people who escape or are released from residential schools. We see them as they start their lives in Vancouver and what kind of the trauma of what they went through and what they witnessed and how it affects their lives. This is an extremely hard read because obviously the topic and the subject matter is extremely tragic and horrifying and painful to read, but it's so important to know what went on in residential schools. So I feel like this is a really powerful book. The only part of this book that I didn't love was that it wasn't quite a linear timeline. It was like snapshots into these people's lives. And at times I kind of got confused of what time we were in. But other than that, I highly recommend and think this was a very powerful piece of literature. It is hard to read, so please keep that in mind. But like I said, I think extremely important. I ended up giving this four stars and definitely the stories in this book will be sticking with me for a very long time. Now I've already talked about two books that I read for Smut Den because they were sequels to books that I read earlier. But there was one other book that I read for Smut Den and that was Honey Trap by Tate James. I've been hearing from so many people that I need to try Tate James and I finally have with this book. This follows a group called The Guild, which is basically a group of high secretive mercenary spies. They're like contract killers and hackers and it was very, very interesting. We follow two of our main guild members, Leon and Danny. Leon is a hacker as well as an executioner for the guild. Danny is kind of someone who goes undercover to retrieve information or take down a suspect. They join forces to take down a huge arms dealer called Ares. Ares's real name is Kai and Kai kind of gets the drop on them and ends up capturing Danny. Danny, however, fakes that she is not part of the guild, not a spy, and is just a regular girl who has gotten like caught up in this. And for a while, Kai kind of questions if that's the case. We see it get very smutty between Kai and Danny, and that is where our smut really starts. However, earlier in the book, we see a lot of chemistry between Leon and Danny as well. In this first book, we see them kind of having their two separate-ish relationships, but it is listed as a reverse harem on Goodreads. So I'm wondering if as we go into book two, we see kind of like a combination of them all being together and Danny having relationships with both Leon and Kai. I do not know, but I ended up giving this four stars and I definitely will be continuing with the series. We made it to our last book. Oh my gosh, we made it. Can you believe it? I feel like I've been talking to you about books for forever. I, I ended up reading a lot this month. I read a lot. And the last book I read this month was the B&K Book Club book for May, and that was The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I adore this magic system. Adore it. Adore it. This follows six Midians who are basically magical beings who are entering into the Alexandrian society. They are brought in every 10 years, six people are brought in to become a part of the Alexandrian society. Only five make it and there is a fight to the death to see who does. Like I said, the magic system in this world was fantastic. Each of these six people have their own magic and the way they interact with the world and I absolutely loved it. I ended up giving this four stars. If I was just rating off the magic system alone, it would have been five stars. There was a few things in this book that didn't quite give me five star vibes. However, I've heard from most people that if they gave the first book four stars, they gave the second book five. So I have very high hopes for The Atlas Paradox. I'm gonna be reading it in July because I've already talked Kelsey into doing it for B&K in July because I need to read The Atlas Paradox. We all had a great time with this book and it definitely leaves on a cliffhanger. So like I need, I need to know what happens. Also, my favorite characters in this book are Nico and Gideon. Gideon is Nico's best friend. Nico is one of the six that are coming into the Alexandrian society. Gideon is his best friend. Gideon is half centaur, half mermaid, and I love Gideon and I love Nico. 
and they are not together in the first book, but I will sell my right arm for Nico and Gideon to be together in the Atlas Paradox. And that is the end of my wrap up. I would love to hold the books up for you, but frankly, the stack is much too large to hold up. What was your favorite book in May? Let me know down below. Chat to me down in the comments. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.